Photosynthesis is a process by which light energy is converted to chemical bond energy. This process occurs in chloroplasts of plant cells. The overall equation for photosynthesis is 6 carbon dioxide molecules plus 6 water molecules plus light energy is converted to 1 glucose molecule plus 6 oxygen molecules. The light energy is stored in the high energy chemical bonds of the glucose molecule. This stored energy in glucose can be extracted and used to produce ATPs by cell and respiration, a process that we described in the previous lecture. As a reminder, the cell and respiration equation is given below. One glucose molecule plus six oxygen molecules produces six carbon dioxide plus six water molecules plus energy in the form of ATP. The ATP produced can be used to drive cellular work. Keep in mind cellular respiration occurs in both plants and animals. We will focus on discussing the details of photosynthesis in this lecture. The plant leaf is the major site of photosynthesis. Let's examine the cross-section anatomy of a plant leaf. The top and bottom surfaces of a plant leaf are covered by a waxy, protective layer known as the cuticle. The main purpose of this layer is to prevent excessive water loss. Along the bottom surface of the plant leaf are stomata. Each stoma consists of two guard cells. Stomata are the sites of gas exchange, oxygen exits, and carbon dioxide enters. The upper and lower epidermises are the outermost cell layers of the leaf and provide a protective barrier. Between the upper and lower epidermises is the mesophyll layer. The mesophyll layer consists of palisade mesophyll cells and spongy mesophyll cells. The palisade cells are vertically elongated and have the highest density of chloroplasts. Thus, palisade cells have the highest rate of photosynthesis of all cells in the leaf. Spongy mesophyll cells are irregularly shaped. This creates multiple air pockets which facilitate gas exchange. Now, let's focus our attention to a single palisade cell. The plasma membrane serves as a barrier between the extracellular environment and the cytoplasm. Because chloroplasts are the site of photosynthesis, let's examine the anatomy of a chloroplast. There are three membranes, the outer membrane, inner membrane, and thylakoid membrane. A stack of thylakoid membranes is known as a granum. Although the three membranes separate the chloroplast into three compartments, we only need to focus on two of them. The stroma is located within the inner membrane but outside the thylakoid membrane, and the thylakoid space, which is located within the thylakoid membrane. Let's focus on a side note. Light is extracted by pigment molecules located in the chloroplasts. There are different types of pigment molecules, including chlorophyll A, chlorophyll B, and carotenoids. Chlorophyll B and carotenoids are classified as antenna pigments. Each pigment absorbs light of different wavelengths. The absorption spectrum shows different wavelengths of light in nanometers on the x-axis and the percent of light absorbed on the y-axis. Chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B absorb violet blue and orange red light, whereas carotenoids absorb violet blue and green light. I'm going to discuss a very high yield point. 
Let's take a close look at the chlorophyll A pigment. When light strikes the chlorophyll A, it absorbs violet blue and orange red light. However, green light is not absorbed and therefore reflected. The human eye can only observe reflected light. Thus, chlorophyll A is green. Now let's return to the diagram of our plant cell. Let's zoom in on the thylakoid membrane. Photosynthesis starts when light strikes the antenna pigments located in the light harvesting complexes of photosystem 2. Energy is funneled from the antenna pigments to a pair of special chlorophyll A molecules located in the reaction center. The chlorophyll A molecules is also known as P680 because it absorbs light of wavelength 680 nanometer best. The funneled energy excites the electron in the chlorophyll A molecule. The excited electron, now in its higher energy state, is transferred to the primary electron acceptor. The chlorophyll A molecule is now electron deficient. To replace the electron, water is split in a process known as photolysis. Photolysis releases electrons that are transferred to the special chlorophyll A molecules, oxygen molecules as a byproduct of photosynthesis, and protons. The excited electron in the primary electron acceptor travels down the electron transport chain. This process releases energy that is used to pump protons from the stroma into the thylakoid space, resulting in a high concentration of H plus in the thylakoid space and a low concentration of H plus in the stroma. The electron eventually reaches photosystem one. Light strikes the antenna pigments of the light harvesting complex of photosystem one and energy is funneled from the antenna pigments to a pair of special chlorophyll A molecules located in the reaction center. The chlorophyll A molecules in photosystem 1 is also known as P700 because it absorbs light of wavelength 700 nanometer best. The funneled energy excites the electron in the chlorophyll A molecule. The excited electron, now in its higher energy state, is transferred to the primary electron acceptor. Notice that electrons are replenished by a continued influx of electrons coming from photosystem 2, and photolysis does not occur at photosystem 1. The excited electron in photosystem 1 can now take part in one of two pathways non-cyclic electron flow, or cyclic electron flow. We will discuss non-cyclic electron flow first. In this pathway, the excited electrons travel down a second electron transport chain. At the end of this electron transport chain, an enzyme called NADP plus reductase delivers electrons to NADP plus. In combination with H+, the NADP+, and electrons form a high-energy product called NADPH. Keep in mind that there is now a higher concentration of protons in the thylakoid space compared to the stroma. The protons can now flow down its concentration gradient through ATP synthase to generate ATP from ADP and phosphate. This process is known as chemiosmosis. Note that the non-cyclic electron flow generates two energy products, ATPs and NADPH. Now let's talk about the cyclic electron flow. For this pathway, the electrons are cycled back to the first electron transport chain. As the electrons flow down the first electron transport chain, protons are pumped from the stroma 
into the thylakoid space. The sole purpose of this pathway is to continue to generate a proton gradient that can be used to synthesize ATPs via chemiosmosis. In this pathway, electrons are not delivered to NADP+, thus ATP is the only energy product produced by cyclic electron flow. To reiterate, the non-cyclic electron flow produces both ATP and NADPH, whereas the cyclic electron flow produces ATP only. The reactions that we discussed so far are known as the light-dependent reactions, or light reactions for short. The high energy products produced from the light reactions, including NADPH and ATP, are used to drive the light-independent reactions, also known as dark reactions, or the Calvin cycle. The Calvin cycle occurs in the stroma. The first step of the Calvin cycle is carbon fixation. The enzyme Rubisco combines a carbon dioxide with ribulose bisphosphate, or RUBP for short. Note that the number of gray circles represents the number of carbon atoms in each molecule. The second step of the Calvin cycle is reduction. This step is known as reduction because NADPH drops off its electrons to drive the Calvin cycle. ATP is also used in this step. Keep in mind there are multiple intermediate molecules formed throughout the Calvin cycle, but for the purpose of this lecture, we will only mention key molecules. At the end of the second step, a 3-carbon molecule known as glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, or G3P, is generated. The third step of the Calvin cycle is the regeneration of ribulose bisphosphate. This step requires energy input from ATP. Notice that glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate is a 3-carbon molecule, and carbon dioxide is a 1-carbon molecule. For this reason, 3-carbon dioxide must be incorporated into the Calvin cycle to form 1-glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. This means that the generation of 1G3P requires 3 turns of the Calvin cycle, because every turn incorporates 1-carbon dioxide only. 2 G3P molecules are required to synthesize 1 glucose. Now, let's rediscuss the photosynthesis equation. Carbon dioxide and water are reactants of photosynthesis. Carbon dioxide is consumed during the Calvin cycle, and water is consumed during photolysis of the light-dependent reaction. The products of photosynthesis include glucose and oxygen. Glucose is generated by merging 2G3P, and oxygen is produced as a byproduct of photolysis.